Uh, Jason Tatum with this one. Um, I, I think, I mean, this is his second 50 point playoff game of his career. Fourth mm-hmm. conference finals appearance, Eastern Conference finals appearance. I think with this game, and I'm going to start it off here. I think with this game, he solidified himself as the number one player in that, you know, top five, 25 year old or under talent. You know, I think. You know, him and Luca were kind of battling for that top spot. I know we had a video a couple of months ago where mm-hmm. we had that debate. And I think looking back at it, especially with this game, this is one of the best Celtics playoff games ever. And he did yeah. it at 25. Yeah, I yeah. think he's the number one guy in that 25 and under conversation now. Uh, I would probably say he is because he does it on both ends. It's not too many people that can score one, let alone score 50 points in a game seven playoff game in a yeah. winner go home type of game. And then on the other end, he can. We all know he is a top type of defender like on that team. So I definitely think, especially with Luca, because Luca, he is a player that could put up 50 points, but on the defensive end, he can't do what Jason Tatum does. So I would definitely say he is the number one player as far as like age goes in, in the 25 or younger type of uh, rankings. Yeah, and even even for the way things are. Luca, there, there aren't guys who are at this age who have the moments that he has. He has a couple. He, Jason Tatum has a couple of takeover moments in big time playoff games. And we talked mm-hmm. about the fifty point game in a game seven. He's the only part. He's he's the most points ever in a, in, a, in a game seven NBA history, right? So he makes he he makes history. Like I said, he's got some of the most iconic Celtic playoff games of this century. Mm-hmm. Right, like the things he's able to do at this age are unbelievable, and I know we kind of gave him, you know, some shit a little bit a couple of nights ago when he had like a stinker, like the first three quarters, but yeah. then still closed that game out in the fourth. I, I and we were kind of talking about over text. We don't know what type of player Jason Tatum is, but with this type of game, when it was on the line, when he needed to close it out, he came through and puts up one of the most iconic games in the playoffs we've seen in the last couple of years. He's, he's unbelievable. The shots he was hitting, he was hitting even over Embiid. Those one-on-one plays, and even the stops he was able to get, it was off the chain. This this dude's on, on an entirely different level, and even without a championship at this point, just to make it to that conference finals level this many times, it's crazy for a guy at this age. Yeah, I mean, if you look at you look at his resume since he came into the league in the playoffs, making big time plays. So I feel like people really overlooked that when looking, you know, how he started his career so far. The amount of conference finals he's been, the amount of big games he's been, the uh, amount of big game moments he's had, yep. including this one. Yeah, he he he's. I feel like he has had a couple moments that he's had a couple clunkers, but I'm be I'm gonna be fair. I feel like he's had just as many big just as many big moments as the clunkers. So that's why Ty, I know Ty was telling me earlier he's a hard player to judge. Like some days you feel like he's a top five player in the league completely. Some days you feel like he's bottom ten. But today is the day he felt like he was a top five type of player, like probably like right at five or something like that. So it's it's he really is a hard player to judge because I guarantee you, I don't want to say this, but probably game one, he might have 20 points on like seven or 28 shooting. But then game two, you might see him nearly score 40 points on the fishing shooting. So I don't know. He is a hard player to judge, like I said, but he well, we all know when he's hot and he's on, he's almost like unguardable. As you can see. I, I think so. I think those big time performances kind of out outweigh some of the uh the, the bad, I wouldn't say bad games, but kind of like Carl, like you said, some of those games where he hasn't really performed. Uh, I know, like earlier, earlier on in this series, people was getting on him about his, his first half stats, how he was doing the first half. But mm-hmm. he really, he really, t- he really has this knack to where you, where you need him most, he comes through, and we really saw that. This game. Yeah, except for finals. Yeah, ex- except for last year in the finals. Yeah. Even the, and Blake talked about him having that knack, the bounce back, right? Like. He got criticized. I know he even when he made the game winning plays he did in I think game six, he still got a lot of criticism. He still caught a lot of heat from Celtics fans and analysts. For you to be able to respond like this, you know what I'm saying? With a game like that, it's it's unreal. And, and we talked about it. When you come into the league, this is why I think SGA is gonna be so good once he's able to get this OKC team into the playoffs. He came mm-hmm. in with big playoff games, his rookie year. He plays Golden State in the first round. And in his second year, you know, him and Chris Paul in the bubble, they lose in the first round, but they get in a very competitive first round series against the Rockets. And so now we look at Jason Tatum, obviously. He comes in year one, he's a conference finals player, and he's come into a franchise that's already winning. When you're drafted into that type of situation, it's going to translate. And we're seeing that here. He doesn't look, he's not scared of the moment at all. Some guys may not be ready for that moment at that young age because they haven't been there. Jason Tatum is ready for these moments. You know what I'm saying? That, that was That's why I always was so high on him early on 
was because I was like, his game is going to come together. But the biggest thing is he has so much major game experience, like Blake mentioned, so early on in his career. He comes in, as I said, conference finals. And this is his fourth conference finals at 25 years old. It's, un it's completely unheard of. And shout out to the other Celtics, too. Al Horford, what he was able to do defensively against Embiid. I mean, this is this reminiscent of the stuff we saw in those earlier Horford and Embiid like matchups. Like he's the premier Joel Embiid defender, and he proved yeah. it again here tonight. So that team came yeah. together as a whole and pulled up a major series win against, I think, yeah. the best Sixers roster since Joel Embiid's been here. Yeah, that's definitely. I, I say it's clearly the best Sixers roster since Allen Iverson probably left the team. Yeah, it's just, that that's that's by far that's the best team they probably had over the last probably eighteen to twenty years or close to it. But it, I really thought the Sixers had a chance to get to like I was talking to you. I think after game, it might have been after game four or whatever game James Harden put up forty five. I was like, oh yeah, the Celtics not winning the series. I see, I see the Sixers probably winning in six, which they which they really should have won in six or even in seven, but they they melted again. So I don't know where they even go from here. But yeah. I guess you can. Well, I know one thing they'll do. They'll probably fire Doc Rivers. I think that's. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be. Uh, I, was, I, was just about to ask, it, I was just about to ask. Is it, is it, uh, is it time to fire Doc? It's, it's time. time. It's time. Doc, Doc Rivers, I just saw this number before we hopped on. Doc Rivers has blown seven playoff series with a 3 1 or 3 2 lead. And like I said, I mean, it's not even that. It's the, it's the, it's the talent. It's the talent he's had on these rosters. We go back a couple years back, those Clippers rosters. He was there with the Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, JJ Reddick thing. He was there when it was Kawhi Leonard and Paul George in year one, and that was their best shot at going to win a championship. He's here now. As I said, this is a very talented Sixers roster. Therese Maxey, yeah. Joel Embiid, James Harden. This is one of few teams where they have three guys averaging 20, yeah. right? I can't think of the other teams that have it, but three dudes on this roster average 20, and they have great bench pieces. This is their best roster, and we're st he's still not able to make something happen with it. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's unfortunate because in sports, it's always going to be the coach. It's always 100% of the time going to be the first one to go. But I have to be real. Joel Embiid didn't play well. James Harden didn't play. Like, even though James Harden had a couple, like, great games this playoff series, he had he also had games where he looked pretty bad. Yeah. And this is one of those games. So, his his he could have kind of, I don't know, changed the thought process on how he is around playoff games and big moments. He really didn't do anything for me. I don't know about you all, but he really just – show me what he is the inconsistent kind of playoff performer that's just what he is especially in big games he seems to always not come through and Joel and B like I said before the uh, playoffs even start I was like something you all have to keep in mind he always does have has injuries around when the playoffs start he had a knee injury this time and he didn't play well he had a couple he's melted down a couple times in the playoffs but yeah to have like I said to have three players on one team that average 20 and you don't even make the conference finals and you have the MVP on your team and you have a former MVP in James Harden is unacceptable yeah so. I mean, James, the way James, the way James was playing, I mean, compared to compared to what he was doing earlier in the city, especially that game, uh, that big time game, I think, I think it was what game. There was game one and I think game four, four maybe. Game four was his best one. Game four, he hit that corner three. So that was. Yeah. 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 It's just these last like two, this last games, it's just been looking so timid. Like today, I was uh, we were watching him like, drive into the basket. Every time he drives into the basket, he's passing the ball out, passing the ball out. And I'm just like, dude, just go up with it. Yeah. yeah. You're going to eat it. Yeah. You, it's either going yeah, go to go anyway. Yeah. 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 No, it, yeah. It, it, it's uh, we, we all knew this this series was going to come down to how well James Harden plays. Simple as that. And and I we, I know we do the thing where he's not the same player. He averaged 20 and 10 this year. This is, from a regular season standpoint, it's one of James Harden's most underrated career seasons. And he got a lot of praise coming in, but we just knew it's going to come down to how well he plays. Does he show up? And Carl said it. He's just known as this guy who just shrinks in these major moments. This is a game seven. You're a guy who needs to get to the... He, James Harden's known as the dude that never got past the Western Conference or the Eastern Conference Finals. So there, there is a lot to prove here. He's one, He's probably one of two guys who had the most... He probably has the most to prove this postseason out of any individual player. And Bede had a lot to prove. He did, For his legacy, he had a lot to prove. And in a moment, in a game where even if Embiid doesn't play well, you're going to be the guy who has to step up. We all knew this series in the Sixers championship, uh, Hopes was going to ride off how well he plays. And he just does not show yeah. up. And like you said, Carl, he has these games where you think he's going to be there. He's got two 40-point yeah. games, two game winners a series, but in yeah. game seven, just completely non-existent. Yeah, the thing I will say is, is no Ben Simmons on the team no more. So Philly fans can't blame Ben Simmons. This has to fall on three people's shoulders. J 
James Harden, Doc Rivers, and then Joel B. And I don't want people to kind of go, I know Joel B won the MVP, but like I said, he has had times where he melted in the playoffs because what people start to do with him, especially with Al Horford, Al Horford has done a great job against him in the playoffs. And Ty, you even made a joke once saying the 76 ers signed Al Horford that one season just so they he couldn't guard Joel B. Pretty but, much. Um, yeah, but, but people have figured him out in the terms of they would double or even sometimes triple team him in the paint. And some games he does pass out of double and triple teams well, but some games he doesn't. He really struggles with it. Or sometimes his shot isn't falling and they just wait for him to sit in the post. Like the, the disadvantage of being a traditional big man in this day and age is when you're in the post so long trying to bag a player down, that gives a chance for the defense to set and you're kind of just stuck at times. So yeah. it is definitely some disadvantages of playing like the old 90s or early 2000s style as a big man. So that's why I don't I, I, I can't give I can't give him some blame for how he performed, but then again, it's just like they they did defend them well at the same time with like double and triple team it's crazy but yeah it, it, and they for, it they forced him to take a lot of uncomfortable shot like they or they forced mm -hmm. him to settle a lot i think that's what's so great about horford is he's not going to be able to bully out horford so they force mb to settle and whenever you're a talented big guy we know it doesn't matter who you are if you're nikola Jokic, even if you're akima lajuan if you're joel Embiid, it doesn't matter how skilled you are as a big man you, e, Anthony Davis is a great example. We know these guys can make shots from distance and they can stretch the floor and all of these things. If you can make a big man settle all night long for turnaround contested jumpers and all of that, no matter how skilled they are, that's a win. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I feel like they made Joel Embiid settle a lot. And Carl, you mentioned it. Some of the things they did defensively made him kind of question what to go into, right? Like yeah. he didn't really know what movie he was going to go into or he'd force something up or like I said, yeah. he was forced to make a bad decision, which is a major difference between, I know we, we get to the Jokic and Embiid debate. It's a major difference between those two guys. I feel yeah. like if you threw that same defense at Jokic, he doesn't react. I, I feel like he does better than Embiid in that situation. I think, yeah. I think he does better just based off of the fact that he's a much better playmaker out of that, out of that position. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will. I will say what makes it. You, I might agree with you on that, but what makes it look better is a lot of the players on the Nuggets will probably hit those shots that the Sixers missed. They, the Sixers missed a lot of three pointers and a lot of wide open shots too. Because when you double or triple team somebody, especially somebody, it's probably going to be two players that's open. He either made the right play and they missed, or he either turned the ball over. But he made the right play on a couple of those possessions and they just missed. Like in that third quarter, they couldn't buy a shot. So eight for thirty-seven from three, uh, and, and you know. Carl, and then you guys have said it too. It, we gave Harden a lot, but I think Embiid's at a point where he's got to kind of prove himself too. You know That's what I mean? Saying. In these big moments. Last last year, he melted down in an elimination game against the Heat. So this is back to back seasons where he melts down. Back to back. The Hawks, the Hawks yeah. wasn't that great either. He wasn't Even all hurt. that great again. Yeah, it, it, right. Yeah. And, and so, like, this is back to back where you melted down. And, and look, he deserved the season MVP. He deserved the season MVP. He deserved it 100%. I didn't think from a regular season standpoint, we always come back to this debate. I don't think from a regular season standpoint, Jokic was that much better than him to win mm -hmm. three straight MVP. So we deserved the season MVP. But we all knew that this particular debate between these two guys, Jokic and Embiid, was going to come down to who's the last man standing in the playoffs. And Nikola Jokic is the last man standing. And I just know if you throw some of those same defensive looks, at Jokic, I just feel like he's gonna do better. We have videos, people are gonna go back. You guys said this about I know one on one and beads had his way against Jokic and all of this stuff, but this kind of makes you think we just like I said, we just knew it was gonna come down to who's the last man standing between these two guys in the postseason. And yeah. beads or Jokic's the last man standing, and I think he, he has that title right now for the top big man spot yeah. in the game, you know, snatch that from the MVP. Yeah, so. Yeah, he does. Cause I, like I said, I agree with you. I think he probably would have put up a better game than uh, Joel B put up today. Basically, because he does obviously does one thing that he can do better than Embiid is pass the basketball and kind of, I don't know, kind of get the the motion of the game and, and steer it towards the direction and it gives his team a better chance to win. I would say, but I definitely, yeah, Nicole Jokic definitely has the title for the best big man in the league right now. And I didn't want to say that because probably for a whole year I was like, I don't care. If a Joker wins another MVP, he just can't do what Joel and B does on defense. But it's coming to the point where I don't think Joel can impact the game in, in a lot of ways that Jokic like Jokic can. Because if Jokic isn't scoring, we know he can still impact the game by damn near having 15 assists and 15 right. and like 15 rebounds. I'm like not even kidding. He can legit get 15 rebounds and 15 assists in the game. So Joel and B can get 15 rebounds, but we're not going to see him get like 10 plus assists. We might right. not even see him get five plus assists. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, in Jokic just doesn't have as many playoff blunders, right? Like even there are a couple yeah. of theories. Like if we go look at what Embiid did in the playoffs against the Raptors back in I think 2019, that was a series where he was, you know, really really iffy. You know what I'm saying? I think, or even at the play, the that postseason as a whole, he only averaged like 20 points a game. You know, so oh, yeah. I, that that's kind of it, it's it's not an overarching thing with him, but it it is becoming a small theme. So I thought if we were going to talk about at least if we're going to talk about hard, we got to talk about the entire Joel Embiid thing as well. You know what I mean? Just yeah. just to be fair, but obviously Harden had the most to prove, and I think his legacy is just really in question because his whole thing is I, I'm going to put up these great numbers. If you go look at it, Harden's numbers in the playoffs, they look great. But it's just those big moments. He just either just runs to a team that's just obviously better, right? He's had those situations. But also, there have just been a lot of meltdown moments. You know what yeah. I mean? I think before this game, um, you know, his worst, you know, his worst playoff blunder um, at this point, I think, was in 2015 against the Warriors. I think we had like 12, um, you know, turnovers or something of that nature. You know what I'm saying? Two, had a two for 11 game five in the West Conference Finals with 12 turnovers. So I think before that, this is probably his worst elimination level game or whatever. And this one kind of takes the cake just because I think he's got the most to fall back on as well. Like to me, he had a lot to fall back. At least in Houston, he didn't have as much to fall back on. This year, I mean, from a roster standpoint, the Sixers yeah. were probably a better team from a roster. Oh, standpoint. yeah. They, yeah. 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 And, and the Celtics, that is a tough thing because when you go down the line, the Celtics do have a lot of talent too. So it's probably closer than you think. But I feel like they should have definitely got Tyrese Maxey involved more in these last few games. I feel like he was kind of just not pushed to the side, but I feel like Doc probably should have kind of got him to plays in instead of just going back and forth between Joel Embiid and James Harden. Because when that happened, the offense kind of got stagnant. And then when those guys were, were open or did have the ball in their hands, they kind of probably should shoot the ball cold because they didn't get the ball for a whole quarter, maybe even – probably 10 minutes or whatever the case may be so doc probably could have done better in, in justin and his coaching obviously but it's crazy because the 76ers have two players on their team that are probably going to be deemed as regular season players now yeah like, especially yeah. james harden james harden if he was a regular season if if the if people's legacies were just built on regular seasons he'd probably be the greatest player of all time like <laughs> yeah you know, type shit like, i'm yeah. like dead ass serious and then joel would probably be a top I don't know, top six or seven greatest player of all time if it was just based off regular season legacy, but it's not. Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta show up in the playoffs if you wanna be a part of that top tier type of players all time. Yeah. So I think the inconsistency for Maxi is the thing to talk about this year. I mean, last two games for this 26 points and 30 points. Um, and then but then like I said, tonight, 17. Uh, then there was another game, 14 points, 13 points, 13 points. Then there was 26 in game one. So like I said, it's inconsistent usage of him, I feel like. Um yeah and things of that nature. I think just getting him as involved as possible is important because he is a guy who we know for him as also as for a young guy, he's solidified himself as a dude who can play in these big playoff games and, and perform in those big moments. He proved that since his rookie year. Um yeah, you know this so should, this series should have if there was any uh bounce left this year this series should have series should have silenced boons. Yeah I, 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 at least I think so. I think yeah. So. He had a couple he had a couple of really yeah. good ones but like i said i think it was just a consistency thing and like i said it could come down to the usage yeah but yeah yeah I don't, yeah i don't know if they just used them right away because he did have some inefficient ass games too yeah so even the good ones goes, he was yeah. yeah yeah so it's just like is that a usage thing or is that him shooting too much like this but i think he'd be good for like he could potentially because he put up any but yeah he put up 20 points like this past season this season whatever so he yeah. could probably if he keeps trending towards the right direction, he can maybe get him a couple All Star appearances. You never know. Yeah, I've you got, know, no, I've got enough. Especially in the East. Especially yeah. in the East. Yeah. With, I mean, with the shoot, with the shooting splits, I, I feel like that, that's that's kind of a product of him. He's, he's still a young player. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think about it when he, you know, as he gets older, he'll he'll straighten out. Yeah, and he's usually efficient. Like I'm the I, Therese Maxey is the last dude I'm gonna point fingers at with this. It just it comes down to your two superstars. Right, it comes down to that. I mean, they, they, they have two proven, they have two superstars to the Celtics. None. I mean, this series Tatum may have proven. If you didn't think before, this game Tatum proved himself as a superstar. Harden and Embiid are already superstars. You feel me? You know. So, so it is what it is. I, I think it was really cool seeing also Tatum hit those shots over and Embiid because they're workout partners. And so, like, he had a bunch of those shots over him. Hey, I was like, I hey, know we see this in all hey, season. I, I bet it be, I bet it be not going to work out with him no more. Hell no, nah, man. Nah. <laughs> he was in a, it, I realized when he was in a groove, bro, when he shot, I think it was either at that corner, it was a corner three over him. And B was like, you know, and B like seven feet. He yeah. was all over him. And he hit that shot. He was like, oh my God. I was like, yeah. One of those days. 